name is Adrian Nanchev and this channel is all about helping you become a remarkable entrepreneur. So click on the subscribe button below and press the bell notification next to it for the latest uploads. Now five reasons why entrepreneurs fail in business. Five reasons are bad pricing or wrong pricing, bad timing, bad marketing, bad business model or they lose interest or lose momentum. So bad timing, bad business model, bad pricing, bad marketing or lose interest. So let's have a look at those. So bad timing, bad timing, now let's go. Wrong pricing, actually let's do <laughs> wrong pricing. So pricing, there's two ways of approaching pricing. You either want to be the cheapest there is in the market, commodity, you're a commodity, take Asda, take Walmart, take um, take Amazon. It's the race to the bottom, which is okay. Squeezing the margins, making everything as efficient and as cheap as possible so as to save the customer money. And that's great, that works. But the opposite to that is a race to the top. Who can be the most expensive? Who can create the biggest brand, the biggest trust, the biggest reputation? Who can, ha who can charge the highest price? I saw recently, I forgot who what company it was, but some fashion company or something like that was trying to charge someone or people $185 for a paper clip. Let that sink in. Almost $200 for a paper clip. They weren't going on the route towards being the cheapest on the market. They were going towards being the most expensive by being by building a brand, by being seen, by being known, liked and trusted. But whichever way you go, cheapest or most expensive, the, the, the proposition you have to your customer, they've got to be willing to buy it. If, if no one is willing to buy a paperclip for $200 odd dollars, then it's not worth it. You're in the wrong area. You're overpricing a product and it's a, it's a mismatch with the rest of your business. Walmart would never be able to do that. They would sell dozens of paper clips for a dollar or something like that. No chance, no one would buy it and they would, the business would suffer. So the pricing can be mismatch. The pricing can be wrong and often, I say the pricing is that people put it too expensive. I think most people are too expensive for their own brand, their own good, and they don't understand true value. Because you see there's a difference between price and value. The difference is price is what you pay value is what you get and some people don't fully understand and estimate how much value they give to the market in relation to the price they charge because someone could charge say £10 but they could end up delivering £100 worth of, uh, worth of content so that would be really good value for money whereas someone could charge £50 and deliver £100 and it would be okay and if someone, it would be good actually, it would be good, but if someone charged £100 and delivered 50, delivered £50 worth of content, they'd be ripped off. And some people don't understand how much value they bring to the market. And it's not so much, it's not so much, it's not so much detrimental, it's just looking, having self-reflection and looking at yourself and saying, this is what I do, this is what I give. And one rule of thumb for pricing is, the value you give to the market, let's say it's £100, you want to charge one-tenth of that, so it's £10. I know that in consulting I can give easily £500 of a value, so I will charge per hour 50 quid, because I know that the information I'm going to just spew out will, can change their business. And if you give me three hours, I can give you almost £2,000 worth of knowledge and experience. And that, by the way, that's only going to increase. I'm over time only going to increase that to £100 an hour, £200 an hour, because I can give I can give ever more value to people. And also, interesting point about pricing is that the higher you charge, the more inclined you are to give a damn good service. If if someone pays $185 for a paperclip, you you better you better bloody guarantee that paperclip is going to come inside like velvet, silk box with ribbons and a nice price tag and a cushion inside it and that's going to be like smelling of lavender and stuff like that. You can guarantee that the delivery is going to be damn worthwhile otherwise they'll be really annoyed. It's going to be a massive mismatch. The price, the stuff you sell has got to, has got to justify that price tag in one way or another through trust, 
reputation, etc., etc. And if there's if it doesn't justify it, you've got no sale. The pricing model is totally messed up. Now the other thing that entrepreneurs fail at is timing. Now timing is very interesting because what you're looking for really is you're looking at the market you're trying to enter and you're trying to gauge where the inflection point is. The inflection point is like the pivot, like in a timeline of like mass adoption, mass appeal, mass understanding, mainstream conscience. Everyone gets it, everyone understands it and then they all want it. So a big example of this is social media. Social media was around in the late, late 90s and the early 2000s, but it didn't really start to gain some traction until we start seeing um, MySpace. When MySpace came along, people start to understand it, they start to grasp and play with it. It's just like, you know, a place to go online, it's a place to be seen. But it wasn't until really 2008 when social media really took off, where Facebook started to just become the mainstream thing and everyone went to it. Um, when everyone goes to when everyone went to Facebook, everyone just flooded Facebook because they realised that this is the place to be. That's the way to talk. You can you can do it. it. What I call is market maturity, where it's in the nineteen say nineteen ninety five, people didn't realise they needed or understood social media at all. There's no con probably no concept of it or some faint technical theoretical ideas in universities or or in in science labs. I don't know. Two thousand five. People understand the gist of it. They understand, like, you can talk to people on there, but then it's like, really, you can talk to people? Because they were, they were less reluctant, but they still don't understand it. By 2010, they're all in. They fully grasp it. They fully understand it. And by 2015, who's not on social media? It's, it's, it's in the market maturity. Because you can be too early or too late to the party. But when you're there at the right time, you get access to the buffet, and you get the best drinks and the best seats in the house. That's the thing, and that's really just looking at looking at demand, looking at what people want, what people need, and how your product or service helps them. Because at the same time, customers in the world don't always know what they want. If you ask a caveman, what kind of tool, hunting tool do you want, he's going to say a sharper, longer stick. He's not going to say AK-47 with 20 rounds, is he? He's not going to talk about a rocket launcher, well, I don't know, a net. He's probably not going to mention a net. He'll just say a, another spear. Like Henry Ford, he said, if you ask what customers want, they will just say they want a bigger chariot with more horses. They're not going to say automobile with transmission and reverse and six gears and 200 horsepower, that kind of stuff. They're not going to say that. They're going to say more horses. So it's interesting about timing that if you really are clever, if you really tweak it, people can, you, you can lead the market by saying this is what you want, you want to use this, you want to use that. Steve Jobs did this very well with an iPhone in 2007, where people didn't know they wanted it, but he persuaded them that, yeah, you need this, you want that, and people bought. He created his own inflection point. Probably that's even harder um, to do than finding it, but still perfectly doable. But these are things worthwhile looking into at the very least. Just go onto Google and type in inflection point marketing, inflection point business, and see what kind of stuff and results you get, because all loads of ideas. Bad business model. Now, a business model is all down to what you're selling, as well as the price tag, and uh, who you're selling it to. So, it, my intuition says you need at least four kinds of. There's, there's four different kinds of products that you can sell online. You can get ahead with just selling one or two of these products, or you can't get ahead with this, selling zero. Zero plus zero it makes no sense. But you can you can make money just selling one of these. Now, the first product is free. Free products. Like freemium. Second is cheap. Third is expensive. Fourth is subscription. Now, free is just putting content out in the world to get momentum, get reputation, get respect, get authority, be known, liked, and trusted. Okay, that's good. Second is cheap, which is low value, high volume content or information products that get shipped or delivered to the customer automatically. Because if it's high high volume, that's a lot of messing around, a lot of operations and logistics to sort out. Forget that. O opposite to that is expensive, which is high value, low volume. So this is things that you, they want to be bought one or one to three or five times a week because they're expensive. And the last one is subscription, which is essentially just Netflix. You know, um, 100 people paying you 100 pounds a month. You, that, that's reoccurring cash flow, that's, that's very reliable balance sheet, so it's like that's some good numbers. 
so that you can have any one of these on their own or in different combinations and still have a profitable business. Like for, like for example, like for example, Netflix is just pure subscription. Apple is just pure expensive. Walmart is just pure cheap. And any freemium game, um, Bejeweled, I can't think what else there is. Any like free game on iStore that's freemium will be free where you but you download it and you have in 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 app purchases or do some adverts or something but in a business i i endeavor to have a free product and this video is an example of a free product it's out in the world doing its thing i'm duplicating myself having conversations and then i have a cheap product and that cheap product in, the, in for example in my case for my per this this channel the free product the cheap product is amazon products the books books Kindle and eventually, when when uh, schedule permits and budget, is um, audiobook. It's online. People can find me. It also helps for SEO. Both of these help for SEO as well, which is very handy. The expensive, the cheap stuff also is uh, consulting. Uh, yeah, is it? Yeah. So I will do an hour of consulting for fifty quid to start off with. I mean, like by the time you watch this, it could be a lot higher. Where I just we talk about your business for an hour and I just share advice. And the other thing after that is speaking engagement. So it's, that's this is what I'm planning. There's there's other things I could do, but for day one these will do nicely. Speaking engagements, very expensive, two grand. It's going to increase over time to talk, talk about entrepreneurship or marketing or something like that. And the last one, subscription, which I got a few ideas but not implemented yet. So those how I'm using it, and that's how I'm um, using it in conjunction to the in, into this business. And another business that I'm I'm starting. Kind of like at the same time as this, implementing the same structure. Free, cheap, expensive uh, subscription. Now the fourth reason why businesses fail is, I can remember it now, bad marketing. Now, this is interesting. Um, you re My intuition says, and I feel that in business, you need two things when it comes to marketing as a result. One, you need the attention. You need eyeballs. Eyeballs looking at you because where there's eyeballs, there's wallets, and when there's wallets, there's sales. So this is like phase one, getting attention. Ooh. After that, you need trust. You need to be trusted by the people who are looking at you because you can get as much attention as you want, shouting and screaming, for example. But no one's going to give you money just because they're looking at you. Doesn't mean they're going to give you money. Um, you need to you need to then gain their trust, and when you gain their trust. This goes into that thing I said earlier about a commodity or a brand. When you have the trust, when people know, like and trust you through the marketing content, through the different products, through the attention to detail, through the purpose you've got behind the business, people, when people trust you, they'll buy from you. When people see your product being used elsewhere or they heard about it or they've had testimonials about it, then they're more inclined to buy it. When they see that other people have bought it or that it works, and there's evidence that it works, and they're more inclined to buy. They trust you. This is why Amazon have got these five, you know, that five star thing. This is why there's always testimonials for videos. This is why you get like reviews. Is it good? Is it bad? Do you do you trust that review? What do you think? Do you you know this is good? This is bad? Oh, it's good. So I trust it then. Because we see humans are social animals, but we're not going to go on our. We're not going to go somewhere on our own. We're going to go with the crowd always. It's, it's like in our brains. Wherever the crowd is, we're going to follow the crowd. So if we see the crowd walking down a certain path, then we're more inclined to follow that route. So if there's other people that say, yeah, you can trust him, yeah, you can trust him, yeah, you trust Adrian, trust Adrian, people always come up to me and they say, yeah, I trust you, and you present that to your customer, then they're more inclined to buy from you. So it's trust. You need eyeballs first, attention, and that's, that is by passing what I call the so what test. If you can present, if you can market and present your business and product or services in a way that passes the so what test to your customers, then they'll give you more eyeballs. They'll they'll see your know, marketing content. It's like I don't care about that. Whatever, yeah, whatever. But if if it so what? Oh, I want I want to learn more. Tell me more. I've captured their eyeballs and then capture their capture their trust. Repetition. Google did a um, study a few years ago. Where they, where they real analyze different content and like um, attention or watch time or something like that and they realize two things from the data they realize that one it either takes seven touch points or 11 hours of content 
for people to start building rapport. Seven touch points means seven blogs, seven videos, or, or seven articles by you. Yeah, seven articles. Or, or 11 hours. So if, if, if you watch me on, on, on YouTube Live for 11 hours, you will then start to build a rapport with me and, res and, know, and, to be, and know, like, and trust me. So if you can incorporate that into your business, 11 hours or 7 touch points, then you can start building trust. Because when you've seen someone that many, that many times, you're familiar with them. And when you're familiar with them, you begin to trust them. You begin to know the person. What is called a parasocial relationship, where I'm talking all about me and my journey, my business, my life, struggles and experiences. So you know all about me, but I know nothing about you. So it's, it's a relationship, but it's one, it's one side that it, it's, you know everything about me. But I know nothing, I know nothing about you. So it's a parasocial relationship. And those can go out, out of hand if they're, if they're unhealthy in some ways. So be, be conscious of that. Um, so trust and atten attention and trust. And the last thing, the last thing that for, co causes entrepreneurs to fail is losing momentum and interest in what they're doing. And this happened to me in my first business where I was selling video games online. I had a website, gameoverload.com, gameoverload.com, and I was selling, uh, um, I was essentially a third party retailer. I bought my games, the digital codes, online from a supplier in Cyprus. I bought them, I didn't really buy them, I had them, and the website was here. So when someone buys one of the games, they give me, say, 10 quid. I then take that 10, and I take £5, for example, and I go to the supplier, buy that game, and give it to the customer. And that must have taken, I don't know how long that, that took 10 or so minutes to email back and forth. So that, that happened. Um, looking back, that the business model was very smart, but I lost interest in it. It was video games. I used to study video games at university, but I just lost interest in it. I, I realised, near the end of university... I was more of a leader, I was more of a, you know, a developer, I was more of a guy in charge rather than a follower, you know, an assistant, or a, you know, I'm more in charge, I'm more number one, not number five or ten, or ten, I'm like in charge. So then, it's like, I started that business, but then in January 2015, but by July I had lost interest in it, I, I had moved on, it, it, I just fizzled out of interest and fascination, I tried to pivot into podcasting, but it didn't work. Looking back, though, with the new strategies I've learned, I could take that. I could probably take that business to the next level. But the thing is, though, I have no interest in video games, no interest in it. So it's like move on to something bigger and better, which is this. So you can lose interest in the business. This is why it helps that when you start, you work on something you give a shit about. It's something you care about. It's something you love, and it's you're making a difference and a dent in the world. You're making a difference that you want to see in the world, and you're making a dent that you want to leave behind. You know, for a hundred years or so, you know, from now, so people know you way beyond when you've passed away. Also, when when you do what you love, there's an old saying that when you, when you do what you love, you never work a day in your life again. Which I'm not quite sure about that, but um, that that's that's a philosophy that uh, I subscribe to, because when you do what you love. You give a shit about it. You care more about it. You know. You got to. There's two requirements in business. You got to be happy and competent with what you're doing. If you're not happy, which is an emotional requirement, you'll be stressed. You won't. You won't enjoy your time. You won't care. It's like pff, whatever. You know. You lose interest. And if you're not competent, then you're not going to see the fruits of your labour. You're not going to see the results. You're not. You're going to get frustrated. So you then. You know. If you're not happy and competent with it. It's going to flounder. And I wasn't happy just selling video games because I didn't care about video games anymore. It's just like I've moved on. Some would say I've grown up, but eh. So those are the five ways that entrepreneurs can fail. Now, actually, the question of the day, the question of the day is which of those five do you think affects you? Which of those five is you know most relevant to you? For me, for my second business, selling video game, um, selling gifts, I'd say it was timing. I'd say it was timing because there was no market maturity and no one really knew you could do what I was selling. Now for... Let me think. Probably, probably marketing is the one I'm suffering for on this channel because no one knows about me. No one knows I exist. No, no one really... 
Some people don't care. Some people do care, but no one really knows I exist. So I need to change that. Ch I'm changing that through collaborations. I'm just creating more content. I'm recording a bulk of content now and then just pumping it out one video a day. Just, just to get momentum out there. But what about you? Of those five, which are the ones that you're failing on the most? I'm very curious. But also remember that this channel is all about helping you become a remarkable entrepreneur. So go out there today and do something remarkable. But before you do that though, click on the subscribe button below and press the bell notification next to it for the latest uploads. How cool is that?